today I will be sharing with you which perfumes I've been loving and enjoying the most during the month because it's another monthly favorites episode which I hope you enjoy watching so if that's the case make sure to give me a sign by giving this video a huge thumbs up and of course subscribe to my channel because that would mean a world to me and once you're done with that we can dive into this top 10 list. Welcome everyone! By the way, check out my outfit. Isn't it cute? Well, today we are gonna talk about those most worn fragrances of the month and of course, as always, I'm very curious about which fragrances have you been wearing during November, which in my personal opinion is really the worst month out there. Well, except for Black Friday and a few birthdays, but uh, it's always so gloomy and rainy and maybe even snowy and the weather just sucks. So I try to, you know, keep myself up with perfumes because uh, it's such a hassle every morning to get myself out of the house and to go to work. Literally, my biggest dream ever is to work from home. So, you guys, uh, let's talk about these perfumes. I probably will start with the one that um, is new in my collection and I have been obsessing over it, literally, like ever since I got this new year release from the French niche brand that specializes in creating rose fragrances. So, just in case it's your favorite note, you definitely need to check out Le Parfums Trazine and this novelty from them, Boule de Rose, let me know what does that mean, is stunning. First of all, very cute, very lovely. This pom-pom is pretty, uh, it's not fluffy, it's uh, firm. So this is such a cute bottle, but the fragrance is not as, you know, pink and fluffy and uh, pastel because it smells sharp. Like in the opening, there is so much of black currant. If you pick up the berries right from the bush or where are they growing, you know that it's a little bit tart, it's really uh, tingling and sour and yeah, I'll spray a little bit on. This is how the fragrance opens. So the opening is really, really realistically fruity, juicy, tart, and has some sharpness to it, but it develops into the soapy direction. So there is actually the note of soap, and it smells clean and classy as all perfumes from this brand. Dry down reminds me of my beloved uh, Love by Chloe. I'm ready. Because, you know, why not to show this discontinued masterpiece? I would not call them dupes by any means, but um, something in the dry down, maybe the soapy powderness gives me that vibe and oh my god, I'm there for it. It's also very long-lasting perfume and for me very easy to grab and to wear in the morning just because I prefer more fresh, clean, light fragrances so when I'm just, you know, when I've just woke up, so I would call it actually unisex, leaning feminine, and it's a hit. It's such a bold and bright scent, and I like to smell it during the day. So yeah, <laughs> if you want to be, you know, in the sunny and summery mood during this winter, then make sure to check it out. I think actually a lot of people might like it. For example, if you're a big fan of Delina because you like the musk and the fruit uh, and how they um, just communicate with each other in that fragrance, I think you will like this. Although they are not similar at all and this is much cleaner than Delina, I think that the idea might actually please you. Okay, so moving on from something light, something clean, bright, sparkling, to something sweet, deep, and tenacious, which is this fragrance La Regent or La Regent. By the way, please tell me how to pronounce this name down below in the commentary section, because as you know, I suck at French, and it's by another French brand, Orisa L. Legrand, and it's basically a very benzoin, vanilla-like fragrance. If I need to describe it very, very quick, I would say that this is a resinous vanilla type of fragrance, which smells balmy and oriental. And as you know, I love vanilla. It's my favorite gourmand note, hands down. And I'm there for a good vanilla perfume that easy for me to like, but I'm also picky with my vanilla, and probably that's very confusing. But I mean that if vanilla smells good, 
I can get enough of it and this vanilla smells really great and it's especially nice for colder weather just because it's just warm and enveloping and just recently I've featured this fragrance in the top 10 list of warming fragrances that I like to wear when it's getting colder outside so in case you missed that video make sure to check it out and if you're interested in this fragrance you can get it from Aquasion Natural link is below I also have a discount and there you can get a lot of niche and indie perfumes good so let's talk about something completely different that uh, I personally do not associate with uh, November, but I had a pleasure to discover new US natural fragrances from the brand Fillet, and it's another, yet another French brand. Wow, I have a lot of French perfumes today, almost the majority of them, a few Italians, a few English, but um, I'm talking about Amante that was inspired by the south of Spain, where I would love to be, by the way, Aquacion Natural is based in Spain, Malaga, but yeah, this fragrance opens with such bright and just mm, energizing note of Mandora, which is kind of like a hybrid of orange and mandarin, and I definitely associate the scent of orange peel with Christmas, so yeah, it has been keeping me happy and just giving me the impression of sun or Christmas happiness and vibes and I like it for that. It's a natural fragrance, it is basically citrusy and I like that it reminds me of winter citruses, so just an awesome fragrance for those who love natural perfumes and citrusy fragrances. If you're a big fan of orange bitters, which I am by Jo Malone, by the way, maybe I even have the bad one here with me. No, I don't, I can't see it. Uh, that quickly, but yeah, you will enjoy this and it's natural and it's a great brand So make sure to check out my review on their perfumes and definitely get a few because they are awesome Good guys, so you might remember from my previous best of episode in which I focus on a specific note that I've been obsessing over sandalwood for months and I've been working on a great sandalwood perfume list for a long time because it's not that easy to find sandalwood based fragrances nowadays so just in case you like this note you might want to check out that video by the way I will leave all health information down below in the description box but you can comment your favorite sandalwood based fragrance and one of mine would be this one it's 302 by Bon Parfumeur guess where is this brand from? Of course, France. So I really like the perfumes because there are so many of them and you can layer them with each other and have lots of fun. And this particular one smells so chic because it is a woody fragrance with just a hint of spice cardamom. It is very powdery. And what I especially enjoy about it is the Sour floral. See, I don't know how to describe it. I just picture a sour flower in my head wearing it and there is a lot of this smooth sandalwood in the base and it's basically my go-to work perfume. You know, when I don't know what to apply in the morning, when I'm not sure, if, not, if I'm not in a specific mood, I smell, I spray this and I layer it with another sandalwoody one that, you know, I mentioned um, in my sandalwood uh, list. But anyway, this is such a great perfume for affordable price. Some people compare it to Santal Blush. I would agree they are similar, but this one is so much more affordable. And of course, I have a discount for you. So links are below. And if you love Santal Blush and you understand what I mean by sour floral scene, then you will really like it too. And it's super unisex, like this smells great on men and women and it has beautiful sillage. So overall, great all-rounder and a very easy to wear fragrance. But um, another favorite that is a little bit more unique and um, atmospheric actually that I've been enjoying is November Violet. And it's from a new brand, Saver, that is created by the Swedish indie perfumer Linda Landenberg and with the, her I have a cool interview on Instagram so if you don't follow me there you might really want to because there you can you know stay updated and also meet some perfumers and ask them questions so she has four fragrances for Linda Landenberg range and my favorite rose perfume is from her it's a trembling rose fantastic rose scent and this is her new brand and I really like this fragrance because well first of all for the name November Violet and it really smells like a lost flower 
in you know like rainy earth or something so the opening is pretty intense it's a little bit harsh there is a very interesting fruity element that is going on in there but then it turns fluffy and milky and floral but in a very atmospheric and aromatic way so it um, mids you know the november mood perfectly and uh, yes i've been wearing it a lot to work because i've been in a mood for something that will make me feel comfortable and this is one of those perfumes and the entire overview of the collection you can check out by clicking on the link that i will leave right now on the screen but with that being said, let's talk about uh, a blind bot perfume, shall we? I have two of those blind bot fragrances on today's list. And one of them I've already mentioned briefly. It's True Lust by the brand um, Italy Radio Ranch. Guess what? Another French friend. So this uh, turned out to be a nice perfume, not as great as I pictured in my head, but because I spent so much money on it, I decided to wear it. And Every time I wore it, it was nice. It's pretty clean and soapy, but a completely different type of soapiness than in here. So they're both soapy, right? But this is much muskier and even makeup soapiness when this smells like real soap, you know, like aldehydes and soap. And this smells like musky soapiness. So it smells classy, it smells not vintage, but it reminds me of some old-fashioned body lotions. This is the perfect description for it, in my personal opinion. For me, this is definitely a colder weather type of a fragrance because it's a little bit heavy, okay? Or maybe for nighttime, so I've been wearing it here and there, definitely not the most worn one. It basically sits on the shelf and just um, looks nice because I love red color and you might remember I've been dreaming about it for like years or something because I love the notes and stuff but uh, yeah I think I should continue to uh, to stick to my motto and just philosophy test before invest so um, with that being said let me know if you've blind bought anything recently and what that was and I will be moving, moving on to the next fragrance which is my favorite uh, found of the month and uh, it's not what I uh, picked up, because just today I found um, a place for it on the shelf. Here it is, stunning, vibrant, neon, Malatesta, that's newest addition to Quinto Canto range by Paolo and Tiziana Terenzi. This perfume is gorgeous in and out. So it is powerful, it is quite beastly, and uh, the main note in there for me is leather. So it is pretty leathery, but the leather is very powdery because of iris. So it smells woody. I would describe it as woody iris to leather with a uh, nice musk. So this is a grown up and very mature scent. I think that only those who love powderiness, woodsiness, kind of like feeling of a makeup, um, makeup bag in a leather purse will like it and uh, I definitely love it because I'm a big fan of powdery perfumes. I love Terence's opulent style so it was a huge huge hit for me when I saw it, when I smelled it. I was like oh yes this is definitely the best thing I've smelled during the month and it's new. It's totally worth checking out guys and I think such fragrances that are just more grounding are great for nighttime. So yeah, that's when I've been wearing it. Benny loves it too. My mom is obsessed with it. I get compliments. So yeah, Terenzi made another great hit. But something that kind of like is a hidden gem but also a hit that I purchased for the scent of the video, sorry if I'm mentioning it too often today, but um, I've been really, really working hard on it. So yeah, if you love sandalwood, you really need to check it out. But that was Risk of Blind Buy that I made just because people like went crazy over this scent that is called Nirvana Black by Elizabeth and James. I have never smelled um, any of their perfumes. I never heard reviewers talking about this brand, so just in case you have any experience with their perfumes, please tell me how you feel about them. This stuff is, okay, I would not say the best blind boy perfume um, I've ever um, gotten, but it's close to that. It's not about the notes. It's about the feeling 
that it gives me, as I always say, like I love when fragrance is a fragrance and not just a combination of different notes. This stuff is amazing. I would pay double the price, triple the price. It is fantastic. This is a signature scent in a bottle. It's my new signature scent. Highly recommend it, hands down. Worth all the hype and all the rave that is going on about it. And once again, if you know how the white or the purple one smell, there are a few. Make sure to let me know. This was so affordable and I couldn't be happier about it. I sort of regret that I didn't get a big bottle, but you know, guys, when you're not sure how the fragrance will smell, despite all the hype, you might really want to go for a smaller size so you won't regret it in the end. And another pro for me to get it was that it was compared to a very expensive perfume Violetta by Bottega Veneta that I got for my boyfriend because he loved it. Benny has pretty expensive taste for perfumes. Here it is. And I would not say that they are similar, but they are similar in the way they perform, and they perform fantastically. So, um, two fragrances left. I want to continue with New York 55 by 4162 Tuesdays, because I recently filmed a top 10 gourmand list for my second channel in Russian, so in case you speak Russian, make sure to subscribe to it, link is gonna be below. And I've been digging my sweet, really gourmand fragrances ever since that, and uh, sprayed this, which is uh, one of my OG favorites, on my coat. And I've been smelling like a raspberry milkshake for days, and it's stunning. It is definitely one of my personal biggest favorites when it comes to fruity and sweet. And Sarah McCartney is great at both, so this smells like a raspberry jam in a bottle. And uh, once again, it gives me the feeling of happiness, the feeling of um, coziness, the feeling of like uh, best friend being around you all the time, you know? And uh, I've been need that feeling so much, so uh, it was just amazing to rediscover the perfume for myself and I bought it to wear as a per as a fragrance work at my last work and then I'm working in a new place and I just sprayed it and I was just like, oh, it smells of the time when I didn't used to wear it that much because I knew everything at work, so maybe that's random, I don't know. But um, the last, not least perfume I will be talking today um, about and telling you about, guys, is Okay, it's not only my favorite, Benny wears it every day. And this is like, not even a hidden gem. I don't know if you guys know about this fragrance. If not, then you really need to take a note. And out of all fragrances I've mentioned today, probably you need to get Santal de Pacific by Paris Monte Carlo. I know, that's a lot to say, that's a lot to say, but this fragrance is just some kind of masterpiece, just some kind of awesome awesomeness in a bottle. So it's sort of sandalwoody, but then there is note of lip gloss and maybe it's imaginary, but I find it so, so charming, you know, like note of lip gloss. It's not sticky, smells extremely expensive and actually reminds me once again of this one because um, there is uh, violet in both fragrances and it's not candy type of a powdery violet. I just feel like it smells so grown up and um, just like so luxurious. It smells really expensive, very expensive in the performance. When he sprayed it on his coat, went to the bakery and the entire house, like entire house was smelling so good, like a niche shop. So amazing unisex perfume. You will be hearing me talking about it more often because this is my new discovery that made it to my go-to fragrances. I keep it in my bedroom. Yeah, that's how much I love it. And it is definitely one of the most worn ones out of these 10 that um, I hope you enjoyed learning about. So right now, if you've watched this video, till this moment, make sure to give it a thumbs up and please let me know about which fragrance you enjoyed um, hearing about the most, maybe you will check out, but I would like to know what are your most loved uh, perfumes, so comment your monthly favorites uh, down below, because honestly your engagement means a lot, so make sure to support my channel and if you're feeling extra generous, you can donate on Buy Me Coffee website, link to it is gonna be below, it's easy to do that, you just donate to support um, me as a creator and uh, thank you so much for watching. I have so much fun 
filming for you guys and I would like to film some fun videos. So just in case you know cool perfume challenges or just you have some ideas maybe for top 10 list or anything else please comment that below because I've already planned half of December and those ones will be up but there are a few free days and I would like to post something that you suggest on them so I am excited to hear from you and uh, make sure to stay tuned smell good and we'll see each other next one really soon bye